folks, welcome once again to Brad's Musical Follies. I am here today and wanted to share with you something that I did on Facebook that I thought was kind of cool. I had a friend nominate me on Facebook to share uh, my top 10 most influential records of all time, or the best way they explained it was uh, music that changed the way I listen to music. Um, and I think that's a very, very hard thing for a lot of people to define. I think it's very difficult for most of the average music listeners to, uh, first of all, to post uh, an album cover without explaining your love for it and what you were doing the first time you heard it and things like that. So that was the rule of it is you post an album cover, nothing else, you don't explain anything about it. <laughs> and it was tough for a lot of people to do it, but I enjoyed it. But I thought I would go ahead and do this real quick and maybe just say a couple little things about those 10 records uh, so that maybe I can share a little bit about, about me and my uh, fandom of, of all different kinds of music. And I think that you will agree that my tastes are all over the place. Let's start with the very first one that I posted. These are in no particular order. I'm in my uh, office that I never use. It's hard to explain. I've got multiple ones here in the house. Um, and uh, thinking about cleaning this up and making it a little bit more of a studio, but I haven't gotten that far yet. Uh, anyway, so I'm off camera right now and uh, just kind of showing you a few things here. Uh, the first one is Kiss's Destroyer album from 1976. I was not even six years old. Uh, when I first saw Kiss on TV uh, on the Paul Lind Hollywood, Halloween special, and uh, they played Detroit Rocks, I'm sorry, yeah, Detroit Rock City, King of the Nighttime World, and Beth. And I was freaked out and blown away, and I was never the same person again. I got this album a little bit later. Uh, believe it or not, my parents actually let me get it. Here I am, like six years old at the time, probably. And uh, I mean, the fact that they let me have that. Um, because back then, of course, it was, it was weird, you know, uh, but the music just blew me away. I mean, it wasn't like they said any bad things necessarily. Um, it was just, uh, it was great sound. And that was what was so cool about that record is that, uh, Bob Ezrin did it with them and he did a lot of cool things in the production, uh, like using piano, uh, along with power chords to fill them out and things like that. You can hear it on Detroit Rock City shout it out loud. Um, just a fantastic record that holds a very uh, special place in my heart. I'm going to need to zoom through a few of these. or This, this video is going to be 25 minutes long. Uh, the next one here is uh, from a solo act called Michael Ben. You probably know him better as uh, the lead singer of the band The Call. And uh, Michael Ben had an album out in 1994 uh, I was working in radio at the time and uh, just happened to get this this copy of this CD. And and uh, it wasn't until about 1995 that I first really gave it a listen. And I remember it well because I was on a drive from Sioux City, Iowa uh, to Denver, Colorado to meet up with my good, uh, my good friend and bandmate, JJ. And I listened to this whole thing in the middle of the night during the drive, and uh, it was just, it was so haunting. His voice, uh, the guitars, the lyrics, it's just, it's a very, very underrated and not very well-known album. It's called On the Verge of a Nervous Breakthrough, Michael Ben, B-E-E-N. Also worth noting, if you've ever heard of the band uh, Black Rebel Motorcycle Club, uh, Michael Ben's son uh, is the, the leader, Robert Levin uh, Ben, I believe is the name. I think it's Ben. I don't think it's Bean. Maybe it's Bean. I don't know. It's spelled B-E-E-N. Anyway, uh, sadly, Michael Ben passed away of a heart attack here a few years ago, uh, but uh, he definitely has some great music out there. I don't know how good these album covers are going to come in, but I'm too lazy to... Maybe I'll do a special one here in a little bit, but... Oh, look, there's my... Maybe I'll do a special one here uh, in a little bit. The Velvet Underground and Nico. I picked this one out of a bunch of other possibilities because this was the first one. Um, it took me a long, long time to discover for myself 
the a fascination with Lou Reed, um, and uh, this was the first thing that really grabbed me. Uh, was the very first Velvet Underground record uh, with Nico, uh, Nico, I should say, and uh, it's just got great music. Uh, it's it's amazing. Some of those songs were written in '65 and '66, and not released until '67, way ahead of their time. Um, and uh, definitely just a great album. And if you haven't heard it, uh, this is the first one that I think everybody should listen to this record if they've never heard it before. And like I said, I could have picked any of the other three Velvet Underground records, uh, at least the three that count, four total, uh, or any Lou Reed album. I mean, I just, I love them. And to get back to the Bob Ezrin thing, uh, Bob Ezrin also produced... Before he produced Kiss's Destroyer, he produced uh, Lou Reed's Berlin record, which is just a phenomenal record as well. Very underrated concept album. Uh, in fact, uh, it was such hard work for Bob Ezrin. I've read that uh, he actually <laughs> he actually had to have himself committed. He had a nervous breakdown uh, after he helped record that record with Lou Reed. Uh, lots of drugs, of course, involved and things like that. So anyway, great record. So I didn't post the actual album cover on my Facebook page because I knew that my mom would be watching um, and I knew that she would be offended. <laughs> so she's 78 for crying out loud. Anyway, um, Marvelous 3, Ready, Sex, Go. Uh, this is what the official cover actually looks like. Oh, here I am. I keep doing this. Sorry. Um and uh, that record is it was introduced to me by somebody else that I was playing guitar with and jamming around with. And uh, um, it just, I, I learned about sarcastic lyrics. That was before Lou Reed for me. Uh, and uh, yeah, Butch Walker, whose real name is Brad, by the way. Uh, just great songs, great lyrics, catchy, uh, fun, sarcastic. Um, and I just fell in love with that kind of writing, and so I've kind of picked that up with some of my writing as well, which uh, you may hear in the future, or if you know any of my old stuff uh, with Orphis, uh, you know that there's a lot of that there too. This one is actually very recent for me, and uh, I think I'm going to do an entire video um, about this type of music here in the near future. Uh, William Basinski uh, the Disintegration Loops, uh, one through four. Uh, technically, I picked just one, but I love all four of these records. This is ambient-type music. This is actually tape loop music. It's a wonderful story about it. It's it's repetitive, yet haunting uh, and, and calming and... Uh, it's it's just way more amazing than I ever could have thought. I remember when I first listened to the first one, I was like, well, this is going to be really boring. And then 35 minutes passed, and I'm like, this is pretty cool. And I don't want to sit here and explain it all to you right now because uh, you're not here to, he to listen to me talk about this one album. But there is an interesting story behind it. If you want to look it up, just look up William Basinski. Um, and the Disintegration Loops, uh, and uh, maybe I'll tell you more about it in the future, but it's, it's a great album. So I recently also decided to uh, take up listening to Tool uh, a couple of years ago when I was still uh, writing books, and I found it to be some pretty good writing music. Um, it was before Tool was on Spotify, um, so I was listening to their music on YouTube, um, and uh, now they're on Spotify, which is even better. Um, and I, I, again, talking about lyrics, number one, um, I know they're pretty interesting. Um, I haven't dug quite as deep into their lyrics as I have with say Lou Reed. Uh, but, uh, I really enjoy the music too. There's a different kind of structure to their music. Um, they do things different than most musicians and artists. And, uh, for some reason it, it just grabbed me and I'm like, this is, this is pretty interesting stuff. And, and uh, while I haven't necessarily uh, let it influence my writing too much yet, um, I certainly do appreciate it. So Toe, uh, Tool's uh, Undertow uh, was one of my uh, most influential albums. I think I said earlier it was 10. It's actually seven. It was a full week of albums, so seven albums. This is the seventh and final one. Um, Sean Rowe, and uh, I think it's actually an EP. It's like a six-song EP. It's called... Uh, her songs. Uh, this was the record that helped me discover uh, who Sean Rowe is. 
Uh, and then he had another one out just a couple of years ago, a full length that's really, really good that I really love. Um, off the top of my head now, I can't remember what it's called. Uh, but if you look up Sean Rowe, that's S-E-A-N-R-O-W-E, um, he has a very, very interesting voice. Um, one of the things I like about him is is uh, his vocal range is more in my kind of range, too. Um, it's deep, baritone yet strong um, and haunting. And there's another, again, I'll use that word again, um, just some really interesting music. And he's probably a guy that I'm... I might pay to see him. You know, I, I, I'm sad to say I don't pay a lot of money to go watch live acts very much anymore. But, you know, when you're almost 50 years old and you've seen a lot and uh, it's just, I just don't do it that much anymore. But uh, he's one that I probably would go to see uh, if the situation was right. So there you have it, folks. Seven of my most influential records uh, of all time. Um, what are some of yours? Please feel free to drop me comments down below. And if you watch this video this far, please uh, like this video and subscribe. Hit that subscribe button down in the corner. I love having you here. I like to do videos. And if I know you're subscribed, uh, it means I'm going to do more. That much I promise you. So thanks again. We'll talk to you next time. Have a good one.